Liverpool signing Wataru. Endo from Stuttgart and listen, let's not sit here and pretend that we have any clue who this guy was. The main question that I'm asking you is one, had you ever heard of him? I don't think any of us can confidently say yes. When he come to Liverpool, I was thinking, OK, good, experienced player. I didn't think he could get to the levels of that in terms of the intensity of the game. Is this a panic buy? Is this a panic buy from Liverpool? Or is it a piece of shrewd business? Or is it a shrewd signing? <laughs> Before the 2023-24 season, Liverpool faced a huge problem of replacing their entire starting midfield, and many people outside the club suggested that this transitional period for Liverpool would create a tough obstacle to overcome in order to have a successful season. However, once Liverpool had reached the end of the transfer window, they had largely solved their issues. There was just one position left to fill, the holding midfielder. Potentially the most important aspect of Liverpool's defence was this role. Not only a defensive stopper that would disrupt counter-attacks, but a player who could recover the ball and progress the ball forward for a counter counter-attack. In fact, Liverpool valued this position so much that they put in a £110 million bid for Brighton's Moise Caicedo and a £45 million bid for Romeo Lavia, both of which were bettered by Chelsea. After those two transfers fell through, they turned their eyes to Japan and Stuttgart midfielder Wataru Endo. He was purchased for £16 million, and with that transfer value, he was seen by the wider footballing community as Liverpool making a panic buy. But I have been watching Liverpool very closely for a long time as I am a Liverpool fan. So present bias aside, it has been quite rare that Liverpool have ever made a panic buy under Klopp, and they have shown through his outstanding performances for Liverpool this season that he is far from a panic buy. In this video, I'm going to dive into what Liverpool saw in Endo that other clubs did not, and how his efforts for Liverpool this season have played an integral role in their title ambitions, a role he has played before at his previous club, Stuttgart. Endo had played for a multitude of clubs in his career, Shonan Belmer and Uruwa Red Diamonds, two clubs playing in Japanese professional football, and Sintraiden, a Belgian football club playing in the highest tier of Belgian football. Endo had spent nine years between these clubs before making the move to Stuttgart. At the time, Stuttgart was playing in the Bundesliga 2, the German second division, and they were looking to return to the Bundesliga after being relegated the season prior. In terms of Endo's positioning in this Stuttgart team, Endo would be one of a central midfield partnership playing in a 3-4-2-1 formation. He would act as the defensive stopper and midfield pivot, shifting the ball from the back line to the forward line. He would not act as a box-to-box -box midfielder, but would stay on the edge of the box if they had the ball high up the pitch. The move for Endo was initially a loan, but after finishing second place in the league and achieving promotion, Endo was seen as a key player in their starting 11, and Stuttgart made the move permanent. Endo made 120 appearances for the club, with 119 of those being starts. He scored 13 goals and provided 10 assists, racking up 11 yellow cards in the process, but he did not receive a single red card. After achieving promotion to the Bundesliga, the team finished 9th in the league, but the next two seasons they would begin to taper off, finishing 15th and 16th. The season prior to Liverpool's purchase of Endo proved to be crucial in their decision-making process. The key area areas of play that Liverpool analysed about Endo were his defensive capabilities and his playmaking skills. In the 2022-23 season, he made 70 tackles, 30 of those tackles being in the defensive third and 31 being in the midfield third. He had an overall tackle success rate of 53%. He made 44 blocks, 26 interceptions, and 63 clearances. In terms of his playmaking, he completed 1,170 passes with a completion rate of 79.2%. In that season, he provided four assists with 84 shot creating actions and nine goal creating actions. He progressively carried the ball up the pitch 32 instances and made 171 progressive passes with 28 of those being passes into the penalty area. This was exactly what Liverpool was looking for and his time at Stuttgart 
caught Liverpool's attention. But there was another weapon in Endo's arsenal to analyse, and that was his time with the Japanese national team. He is currently the team's captain, but he has been one of the country's most important players for many years now. In that team, he acts as one of a holding midfield duo in a 4-2-3-1 formation. He acts as the defensive stopper once again. He plays that deep-lying playmaker and stays back on attack or just in front of the centre-backs. His abilities were highlighted especially in the 2022 World Cup, where he played in all four matches, starting in three of them. In that tournament, he made eight tackles, four of them in the defensive third and four in the midfield third, with a tackle success rate of 50%. He made eight blocks, three interceptions and six clearances. In terms of his playmaking, he completed 155 passes, with a completion rate of 80.7%, keeping consistent with his rate at Stuttgart. Although he did not provide any assists, he made 10 shot creating actions and one goal creating action. He made three progressive carries up the field and played 17 progressive passes, with two of those being passes directly into the penalty area. His proficiency to thrive in the highest pressure environments such as the World Cup, paired with his grit, determination and consistency for a relegation scrapper such as Stuttgart, gave Liverpool the perfect reason to turn to him following their broken down transfers. After all, Liverpool needed a player like him. In fact, they already had the blueprint for a player like him. That being Fabinho, who had left the season prior. If Liverpool were looking to contend for the Premier League title once again, most of their defensive actions required a defensive stopper and a counter-attack starter in that holding midfield space. And Fabinho had filled that role perfectly during their title winning season in 2020. In that season, he made 28 appearances, 22 of those being starts. He scored two goals and provided three assists. In terms of his defensive capabilities, he made 62 tackles that season, with 20 of those being in the defensive third and 35 in the midfield third. He had a tackle success rate of 56%. He made 25 blocks, 34 interceptions, and 19 clearances. In terms of his playmaking, he completed 1,381 passes, with a completion rate of 86.7%. He made 50 shot creating actions and five goal creating actions during that season. He also made 19 progressive carries up the pitch and played 129 progressive passes, with 19 of those being passes directly into the penalty area. This was the blueprint, but the Liverpool then has changed slightly to become the Liverpool we see now. In 2020, Liverpool would play the same formation. However, the back line would mostly remain as a four. In possession, either of the three in midfield would come deep to receive the ball. And for most shifts around the back line, the holding midfielder would be responsible for leading defenders away to create free space for the attacking midfielders and the high-flying fullbacks. In today's possession system, one of the fullbacks tucks in with the holding midfielder to create a partnership while the back line becomes a three. Or the fullback will still be central, but will move into an attacking midfield or inside forward role, meaning that the closest centre-back would shift to the space left open by the fullback, opening the space between the centre-backs, which the remaining holding midfielder would at times move into. The responsibility held by this holding midfielder in Liverpool's current system extends beyond the simple stopping of counter-attacks and passing forward. As Liverpool have evolved into slower build-up play, the holding midfielder has become more essential to progressing the ball up and around the field. So Endo had a huge role to fill. He has made 21 appearances this season, with 13 of those being starts. He has scored a single goal, but has yet to provide an assist. In terms of his defensive capabilities, he has made 32 tackles this season, seven of those being in the defensive third and 21 in the midfield third. He has a tackle success rate of 56%. He has made 17 blocks, 14 interceptions and 22 clearances. In terms of his playmaking, he has completed 761 passes with a completion rate of 87.7%. He has made 39 shot creating actions and two goal creating actions. He has made six progressive carries up the field, playing 62 progressive passes, with 16 of those being passes directly into the penalty area. Fabinho has played more games for Liverpool, but Fabinho had already played for Liverpool a season prior. This is Endo's first season, so he has needed time to adjust. On average, Fabinho makes more tackles, but Endo's tackles occur further up the pitch and both possess the same tackling success rate. This shows Endo's role in this current Liverpool system. Both are just as capable tacklers 
but Endo applies his craft in a different way in this system. He is moved further up the pitch when Liverpool shift into their defensive shape, meaning that counter-attacks can start further up the pitch once Endo has won the ball back. Fabinho makes more blocks and interceptions, but Endo makes more clearances. Again, this is down to the Liverpool system. Liverpool need a player to clean up the play, as there are stronger players in the lineup to perform blocks, such as the centre-backs. The interceptions, however, is purely Fabinho's strength. He was one of the best at cutting those passing lanes. Fabinho plays more passes than Endo, but Endo has a better completion rate. It once again shows the role Endo has in this system. Although he is less involved in the build-up, when Endo is called upon, he will be more effective in those playmaking scenarios. Endo makes more shot-creating actions, but less goal-creating actions, and Endo's progressive stats are significantly less than what Fabinho's are. But funnily enough, he is more efficient at passes into the penalty area. Mixed with his passing efficiency, Endo shows he is more effective, and the passes he makes will be more influential throughout the game. Although Although his progressive stats are lower, it just means that Endo does not always have to play the ball forward to create opportunities. Maybe shifting passes to the open man can create opportunities better for him. But in saying that, when he has the opportunity, he has been more effective at playing passes into the penalty area. The difference in goal creating actions, however, is more down to the current Liverpool team, who have been criticised for their lack of efficiency in front of goal. Nonetheless, Endo has fit into Liverpool like a hand in a glove. He has helped Liverpool achieve a League Cup earlier this season and has recorded multiple multiple man-of-the-match performances for the team. Liverpool currently sit in first place with eight games left in the Premier League season and are currently facing Atalanta in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. The team currently are attempting to achieve a treble in what will be Klopp's final season at Liverpool. And although rotation of players is necessary to ensure a healthy and competitive Liverpool side, Endo is one player that can put in the graft no matter how tired he is. Recently, Liverpool played five games in 13 days and were Taru Endo was the only player to start in all five of those games. But probably the most impressive statistic is that Endo is currently sitting in first in the Premier League for points achieved per game in which he has played, where in the games he has played, he has averaged 2.48 points per game. He has quickly become a fan favourite amongst the Liverpool Massive, and I don't think that anyone now can at all claim that he was a panic buy, and he will be an integral part in Liverpool's future. Hope you've all enjoyed, I've been Robbo, and I'll see you next time.